Holy. You hear that? It's loud, right? <laughs> it's actually like ringing in my ear. Pretty consistent so far though. <laughs> Pretty impressive. The version pattern's on point. Today we have the ultimate game improvement iron test of 2022. That is nine different models that Thomas will hit the shots into the Trackman and we'll get all the data and we'll show you guys all the information. Golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you give this video a like, and you drop a comment. Tell us which of these nine models is your favorite. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. And Thomas, a big video today, nine game improvement irons in this ultimate test of 2022. These models have all been in the fitting base here at Second Swing, uh, been you know running out the door for customers, getting them into the bags. Um, again, this is that type of golfer that's usually the most common. Players need this type of performance. So what have you seen from these clubs so far? Yeah, and this might be one of our longest videos for good yeah. reason, because a lot of golfers want to know which game improvement iron is going to be good for them. Yeah. Um, what I'm expecting to see is distance yeah. and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Those two words, when, when I'm talking about game improvement iron, right. That's what we're always discussing in the fitting bay. Mm -hmm. And then even further than that, you know, you we also talk a lot about the launch and the spin in terms of making sure there's enough for a golfer. Yeah. Um, because these irons, we I mean, it's it's that elephant in the room, but it's it's there. Then the lost piece, right? With each of these models, it's getting a little bit stronger year by year with this type of iron and how strong the loft is. So we will discuss all of that information, making sure the ball is launching high enough with these clubs as well. Uh, but we got a good mix of brands here. We got some that aren't super popular. Um, for example, Tour Edge uh, C523 is in this test, and it's been a really good performer when we've tested and when we fit it. We've also got Strixon ZX4. We've got Wilson D9. Then we've also got sort of the bigger names out there, right? For example, Cobra LTDX, Callaway Rogue ST Max, the Mizuno JPX923 Hot Metal, uh, the TaylorMade Stealth, the Titleist T300, and the Ping G425. So nine miles in total, Thomas. So how are we gonna go about testing these nine different clubs here? Yeah, so first off, let's talk about the golf shaft. So for the most part, these golf shafts are the exact same. There's a couple of manufacturers that don't have the exact same weight. Yeah. Um, we, we may be off by a couple of grams, but these are all gonna be KBS, lighter, regular flex. Okay. For the test, I'm gonna be swinging like a lot of viewers are going to be asking for. I'm going to be swinging with slower swing speed, yeah. probably right around about 80 miles an hour. I'm also going to uh, increase my attack angle. Yeah. When I say, I sorry, decrease my attack yeah. angle. Well, so increase the negative number. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. I see yes. what you're saying. Um, so you've noticed a lot of testing I've done in the past when, when I've been hitting irons. I'm more of a sweeper of the ball. Yeah. Well, I understand most golfers that fit into these clubs are going to be kind of maybe hit down a little bit more. Yeah. So I'm going to try and get that attack angle down. I'm going to pay attention to the path and face angle as well. My goal is to try and match up club speed, match up path, face angle, and attack angle, yeah. so I can give you the most unbiased test of all these game of I mean, that is a tall task uh, to, to try and swing as close as possible in those numbers, uh, but we're trying to get as scientific as possible. We have the right person to do it. So, um, Thomas, you ready to get started here? Let's do it. All right. That's pretty good. Yes. Look at that, negative. Look at all the path numbers. Just swing like this more often. All right, it's five with that one. There we go. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. The version pattern's on point. Down 3.0, 0.0 .0 club pass, 0.4 face angle. You made a lot of good swings here at this speed. This is, Dave, just take this to the course when you're about 160 away with your 7 iron. 160? Or 65? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, a lot higher. Right? That was a good ball. Yeah. It is loud club, though. It is loud off the face. That was a good swing. Launches a little higher. Wow, that's a good ball. It'll be close. Yeah, that's good. Because that's a good dispersion horizontal <laughs> oval. Right. All right, so Thomas, five irons in. Um, already some interesting results there. You've got all five of them with you right there. The C523, the LTDX, the 
JPX 923 hot metal, the T300, and the G425. So that's a lot to, to kind of manage at once, but uh, tell us about look, feel, sound, um, anything that you notice in particular after those five. Yeah, so I'm looking down at 05 right now. Uh, one thing I do notice, you know, the, the Torad C523, it probably does like the, the, top, the thickest top line okay. looking down at it. And probably, it's probably up there with regards to similar size, you know, Ping G425 with okay. regards to forgiveness profile. Yeah. They, they, they look like they're about the same size looking okay. down at Ping just has a smaller top line. Yeah. Um, smallest wise, I mean, this also could be the fact, the fact I know there's less loft on this golf club, but the LTDX actually yeah. looks smaller looking okay. down at, um, looking down, and, and then I say the Mizuno, JPX 923 hot metal and the T300 are very, very similar. Okay. Yeah. And then I also noticed audio wise, the T300 was, it seemed like it was louder than the rest it of was. it. It yeah. was. Yeah. It was loud. I mean, the ping's also fairly loud as yeah. well, but I think that T300 definitely stood out that, that yeah. it was kind of like louder off the face. Right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned loft. We should talk a little bit about that, specifically about the uh, LTDX iron from Cobra. Because I'm, I got the numbers up on screen now. There was one iron up there that's just different than the rest of them. Um, yeah. And it's LTDX. Smash factor of 150 on average. And I think every single one was 150 or close. 149, 150. Um, spin sub 4,000. And then your total distance average 194.7. And again, to reiterate, this is Thomas swinging at 80 miles an hour. Actually, on average, less than 80 miles an hour. Um, which is right around an average player. So yeah. just think about the average player hitting a seven iron, 194 yards total. Um, now, if you're looking for distance, that's awesome. But there are some things to think about with that distance, right? Right, and I'm not gonna lie, when I put that thing down first, I'm like, this looks like a five iron address. Yeah. Yeah. Which it's got 26 degrees or 26, 26 and, a half, and a half, I think. Um, which is quite strong considering yeah. my seven iron has 34 degrees. Yeah. Now we did talk in the intro a little about loft, how that's going to be a, a, a big contributor on distance here. Yeah. Manufacturers have done a good job with placing CG in the right places and like right. that. But just know this thing is, it, it's purely after, you're purely after distance if you're right. playing this particular club. Right. Because yeah. we've looked, we're looking at, for example, the launch angle, um, the height, things like that. I mean, it's comfortably the lowest launch. So, yeah. While it, it's, it, it's a game improvement iron designed to get the ball in the air, but when the loft is that strong, there's, it doesn't quite overcome that. And the result is a pretty low ball flight overall, right? Landing angle is the shallowest at 39 and a half. So it was the only one under 40. Yep. So um, it was the only one under 4,000 in spin. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a great club for golfers that do spin the ball a lot. Yeah. Or hit the ball very high. Yeah. And maybe and there second, are a lot of golfers the like that. going like this. Yeah. This is a great option to try and maybe shallow out that ball flight a little right. bit. And there are a lot of golfers like that. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely the, the golfer on the LTDX iron best is kind of fit for. Lastly, before we kind of move on to the final four clubs, I did just want to talk about the dispersion here. We got to, we can show that uh, shot of the LTDX, right? We I mean, this is the one <laughs> 202 yards <laughs> right. um, with a seven iron swing at 81 and a half miles an hour. So that is the basically as efficient as you could possibly be in terms of total distance hitting a seven iron. Yeah, that's, um, uh, yeah, that, that, thing was, that thing was crushed. I mean, I will say it was fairly straight. Yeah, The time just touched left, but it was pretty straight. Yeah, two from, of these that are right on top of each other. From here. north to south, right? I think they were back-to-back -back shots too. Yeah. North to south, very good. But, sorry, from east to west, it's great. Yeah. But north to south, and the only concern is when you're playing a club that's got that strong aloft, yeah. is you may get that chance of that flyer, yeah. like that particular shot there. One that kind of jumps that, on that you. That kind of jumps on you goes um, a little further. Speaking of that, ping, five shots. Um, all, let's look at these carry distances here. We've got 168.9. That's a pull, by the way. So yeah. the right. farthest one was 170. 167.7, 168.4, 166.9. that so. one to the right, I dropped the club. Yep. I, that was the worst swing of the day so far. Yeah. And it almost went the same distance. So right. you were thinking it might end up kind of down in here for about 160 or so, yeah. you know, and to see it still go far enough. Like if you have, for example, you know, you're going after a green, there's a bunker, right? Short, right. Um, you hit that kind of swing. That's probably the first thought is I'm in that bunker. Yeah. You know, but now with that type of, type of club, you can carry that bunker. You'll still be fine. Maybe an up and down, or maybe you're still on the green. Yeah. Um, so that was that's kind of cool to see there. Um, and then LC2, we should note if we take this one out from Mizuno, 
we got these four up here probably sitting pretty good as well with the right. JPX 923. Yeah. That one looks like clearly that was a little bit of a miss hit. Yeah, so. but um, anyway, some other good numbers up there. We'll talk everything at the end and kind of summarize everything, but we've got four more to hit here, Thomas. So that's let's do it. That. Yeah, that's a good golf shot. That was, that was forgiving on that one. I didn't, I mean, it was the spin drop by about 700, but mm. it went for the same distance. You shouldn't have said anything. I thought it was really good. Right. All right. Tricks on. Wow, did that sound different? It was mm -hmm. like compared to the Callaway, that thing like sounded like it was a mouth. Like yeah. not even like. Uh, that was mushy. It was mushy. Yeah. Good dispersion pattern there. Yes, it is. Wow. We're seeing a lot of high carry or high 160s carries to low 180s totals. Yeah. It's not the furthest one left of the day. Holy. You hear that? that? Loud, right? <laughs> Holy God. <laughs> These will be back to numbers kind of close to the Cobra, maybe. We'll see. God, that, it's actually like ringing in my ear. Pretty consistent so far, though. All right, Thomas. Um, the last four of the set here, right in your, uh, well, right in front of you there. Um, interesting results in the last four. Let's walk through first look, feel, sound, the, the you know, the, yep. the routine here on those last four. I think I got to touch on sound first. Yeah. Because all four of them were so different in their, in their sound. Yeah. First, it started off with the, with the Callaway that was mm -hmm. loud. Yeah. And then we hit the ZX4, and that sounded sounded like a forged iron almost. Right. It was very, very quiet. Yeah. I was very, I was shocked how much quieter it was. And then it was like moderate with the uh, with the stealth. Yeah. And then the D9 was explosive. The D9, uh, I can still hear it in my ears right now. <laughs> uh, it was yeah. ringing yeah, in my ears. Uh, yeah. Very loud club. Uh, anything different on looks? Similar? I mean, we're all, we're talking about game improvement irons here, so they can't be that different. So these were all, you know, fairly, I guess, meaty, I guess. Yeah. Like, you know, they, they got fairly thick, thick top lines. The ZX4 would probably maybe just qualify as the smallest look down at of the four. But the top lines in all of them is, you know, they're, they're fairly meaty clubs. Yeah, yeah. Um, the soles are also, you know, fairly yeah, sizable large. as well. They're, yeah, they're pure game proven irons for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Um, I've got the data for just those four up here quick. We can go over and then we'll kind of go over everything that we've collected. But um, what jumps out at you just from these four clubs here that, um, that you just hit? I mean, their they're smash factor numbers are pretty similar. So yep. from, from that sense, you know, I know the lofts have to be pretty close uh, on, on them. Um, Rogue ST Max, seeing that spin rate just a little bit lower, and yep. then that landing angle being a little lower, and then ZX4 landing angle being a little bit lower, that jumps out to me. So yep. for golfers that hit the ball very high, you know, think about th their their ball flight being like this. You can maybe get them more on yeah. a normal trajectory. And then D nine was you know was a little higher. Stealth yeah. was kind of right in there with guys average. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to point out too, I think there was one shot with the Rogue ST Max, maybe this one. Yeah, this one that you you did miss, um, and you pointed, you mentioned that too. But it turned out so well that uh, I mean, you can see that the spin. Yeah, definitely went under the the average, and that's probably why yeah. the average is under 4,000 Right, actually, it is. Um, is this shot right here, but it's still carried right in the middle of the, the average there, right? The average is 171, it's 172.8. So that's some pretty good forgiveness there from the Rogue ST Max. I yeah. think you kind of hit that one maybe even a little bit fat or something like that. Yeah, it wasn't struck perfectly. Still really high and really good distance out of it. Yeah, got away with it. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the forgiveness you're gonna get out of these, most of these clubs in, in right. general. You're gonna get a little bit extra out of a toe or a heel strike or a little fat stroke. Yeah, right. well, um, Anything else here on these four? Otherwise, we can dive into the entire set of data here. I say let's, uh, let's dive into the data. I mean, I'm looking here at ZX4. That dispersion pattern was, was pretty nice. Um, yes. So that, that stands out. There's a smaller circle up there. Stealth wasn't bad either. So let's, um, let's get 09 up on the screen, yep. and then let's see how they compare. All right, so all nine clubs here. We've got the optimizer from TrackMan up here now, Thomas. So uh, what are you looking at here? So, you know, one of the biggest things with game improvement irons you were talking about is loft, right? Yeah. Well, when TrackMan came out, you know, you've noticed that their 
the generic 7-iron is listed at 35.5 degrees. We know the loft on these clubs is not that close. That, that close. So what is going to be different between these and a 7-iron uh, has more loft on it? Well, this is where you're going to notice the biggest difference, right? Is spin. Yep. You can see ball speed a little bit higher in yep. general with game improvement irons. Spin's going to be lower. So if I had a 7-iron that had 35 degrees loft on it, it probably would be about 6,000 RPMs of spin yeah. if I was swinging at 80 miles an hour. However, I do want to touch on it because this is a big thing people always kind of talk about with regards to well, game improvement irons is going to go further just because of loft. Yes, it is. But the landing angle, the height is still good. Yeah. So we're, we're, there's, you're still getting good things out of it, even though the spin is just a little bit right. under what used to be optimal. Yep. Now, times have changed when a 7 iron was 35 and a half degrees. Right. Also, yep. the launch angle is still optimal too. So yep. they're able to they're able to give you a lesser lofted iron to give you more distance, but these clubs are still giving you, in this case, the, uh, you know, the height and the launch angle are where it needs to be. So yep. given somebody that swings 80 miles an hour um, and has an attack angle you know, down 3.3, like kind of an average player, yep. still getting those in the, in the proper window. So it is, you know, we talk, talk about the optimizer here, but this is a, another showcase of how the technology has changed, right. able to launch the ball high, slow center of gravity and still do that while adding distance through a stronger loft. Yes, and that's just my little spiel on game improvement irons. Yes, we know the lofts are stronger. Yes, we know they're larger, more forgiving, you know, further and all that. But you can still see yep. it's performing okay. Yep. Height's still okay, yeah, the launch is still there. okay. Yeah. You're just getting more ball speed at a sacrifice of less spin. Yeah, that's an interesting tidbit there because we do get comments all the time on the channel. People, you know, people say loft jacking and things like that, but um, it's, you look at the optimizer, it's still flying the way it needs to fly. Right. Okay, so we've got, we've got nine clubs up here. Uh, let's try and dissect through the data a little bit. And we can see, you know, club speed, once again, irrelevant because the efficiency number is going to be the reliability there. Right. But you can see we're about 80 miles an hour on average of all the, all the clubs. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about ball speed. The uh, fastest ball speed, yep. uh, not surprised, are mm -hmm. the two strongest irons. Yep. The LTDX, we talked about 26 and a half degrees aloft on the seven iron, 119.3. Clearly the highest yeah. efficiency. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't really close. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't even close. Um, and then you see D9, hot metal, 117 points. I mean, there's a lot about 116, 117. Yeah. Is what we're typically seeing with regards to the ball speed. So I guess that is just purely due to the loft. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if I was going to bend any of these clubs a couple degrees stronger, we'd probably see the, the same. same thing. Yep. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so you can see the smash factor, 143 to 150. So very, very high. Mm -hmm. uh, launch angle. So this is going to be interesting here. We see launch angle. A little bit lower there, interesting, with the ZX4 compared to the LTDX. So that stands out to me knowing that the ZX4 is not 26 and a half. Right. It's got a little bit more loft on it. Um, so interesting that those two were very, very similar. You can see the tack angles were about the same, path yeah. was about the same. So numbers were basically the same. But what does that mean? It means the ZX4 of all the clubs, I think, has the shallowest landing angle. Yep. I think it's 39.3 and flew the lowest. Yep. So good stuff there to, to know that the ZX4 is a little lower trajectory mm -hmm. club. Um, we touch on spin. We already kind of talked about spin, just talking about the optimizer there a little bit, but you're, we're talking basically 4,000 to 4,800. Yep. I think the, the, the big piece here is ping G425. The loft is about 30 degrees on the seven irons. So it's one of the higher lofted, yep. and you're seeing that the spin is a little bit higher. So. If you're looking for a game from an iron, Ping always does a good job with their, with not maybe loft jacking as much yeah. as they as they should. At least with Ping G425, I'm I'm still yet to see what's going to happen with G430. Yeah. Um, but this is this is obviously showing great numbers there with regards right. to spin and height and launch angle. You can see here 43.8, 84 feet in the air. So that one was flying the highest and had the steepest landing angle. Yep, and it's also we should note. I mean, distance wise. G425 still keeps up everything, despite having maybe a little more spin and a little bit um, weaker in loft. It still keeps up. It's not the furthest by any means, but it yep. still keeps up really well and gives you plenty of, of power there uh, for the golfer that still wants that while also maintaining you know, their, their launch and their height and their spin. Yeah, and I would, I would give probably ping the win on dispersion from east to west here too, just on yeah. forgiveness wise. You know, that this was the one that I dropped the club and right. it was further right than anything else, but how, you look from left to right, yeah, it's that's, consistent. That's better. 
as opposed to north to south. Right. We talked about the actual numbers. I think it was 166s to 170. Was yeah. Every shot was in that window of carry distance, which is really remarkable for a game improvement iron and the way they're built. Plus or minus 1.1. Yeah, that has to be the best one up there. Ooh, we had a 1.6 there with the stealth, but... D9, 1.8. But yeah, it was the lowest. So consistency, and then as you spin, plus or minus 140. Yeah, might be the most consistent there, most too. Most consistent there as well. So consistency might go to the pink G425, mm -hmm. which I'm actually not that no. surprised about. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so everyone wants to know about distance, right? Here we go. Here we go. So carry distance. Um, if we look here, the highest carry distance, LTDX 178 going 194. No surprise. No surprise there. Um, now, there is a little bit of a lore of diminishing, diminishing return if you do swing too slow with the least amount of loft. You know, I was still getting a landing angle of 39.5, which is borderline manageable. Yeah. Uh, we start getting under 40 degrees with that landing angle. Then we got to talk about what's the what's the six iron, the five iron, the four yeah. iron going to be like. Right. You're not going to maybe have that thing carry as far, and that's when yeah. we talk about like the hybrids in there too. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's always important to pay attention to when you're doing your fitting is that is that landing angle there. But LTDX goes the furthest, spins the less, um, carries and total carry yeah. and total distance. And also had the the one shot of the day in total distance that went 200 yards. Um, so most explosive with the help of loft, um, yeah. but. As we see here in this test, borderline still flying high enough, giving you enough launch. Right, yeah. Um, okay, so I, I just wanted to touch on this test, you know, with me being the robot today, per, yeah. per se, to try and average it out to closer to 80 mile an hour club speed and yeah, attack yeah, yeah. angle. You can see attack angle basically negative 20.7 to I think negative four was the highest. Yeah. My club path numbers were for this test, every single one was zero point something. Yeah, that's so pretty, pretty darn pretty, good. Pretty darn good there. Face angle, zero point something to one. So this, is, I mean, this is about as close to the numbers you're gonna get. You're seeing the face to path numbers there. Yeah, so you want, you want some reliable data. This is the reliable data you're going to get out of these particular clubs comparing all these nine clubs overall. Yep. Yeah. Um, curve, you're not gonna see that much curve because my path and face angle was very, very close to zero. Um, I mean, there was only one that was over 10 feet, and that was 11 yeah. feet to the left yeah. with the stealth. But otherwise, we're talking these a couple clubs, of clubs with one feet on average. These clubs fly straight. On average, yeah. yeah, they fly very, very straight. Um, which brings us to the dispersion pattern. Mm -hmm. So we so, see we talked about ping already. We should talk about ZX4 was pretty good. That kind of maroonish, darkish, reddish one. Yep. Um, we should also mention LTDX in terms of how straight it was. Uh, that orange one. Um, what else do we have up there? We have the Wilson D9, which was that, it's kind of the, the white one that's farther up the screen. There's two whites because of how many clubs we're hitting. Right. This trackman went through and recycled <laughs> the colors. But the second white one up there, pretty good as well. It's straight up there on the screen, but also north to south, pretty tight. Um, any others jump out at you? Yeah, I think what stands out to me here is you could probably cut off maybe about five or six miss hits. It, yeah. You could probably, you know, focus more on, the, on this data here. but. I'm seeing a lot of red close to the middle, yeah. whether, whether that is T300 or ZX4. So I'm seeing a lot of red close to the middle. Yeah. Uh, obviously, LTDX, you know, I've got four here that were very, very close to the middle, mm -hmm. very close. And then that one that, when you got 26 and a half degrees loft, that jumped on a little yeah. bit, went a little further. I think that one, I might have been one mile an hour faster than yeah. the average on that. So this one went a little further, but. But it's something to know yeah. that one mile an hour faster, just a tiny fraction faster on your swing speed went that much further, so yeah. something to, to note for, you, for golfers that are interested in the You've lines. got a back flag there, that would be trouble. Right. Yep. But no, I, I mean, the dispersion pattern, it's gonna be a lot player dependent, obviously the direction, but what we're seeing here for guys at distance, this is what you would expect, right? LTX goes the furthest, you know, this changes the total distance, now you can obviously see a little bit more separation yep. there. I don't really like focus on total distance so much because at the end of the day with your irons, you want to get carry distance, you yeah. want stopping power overall. And the carry distance is, is going to, pun intended, carry over course to course a little Correct. bit better yep. um, than total distance well, just based on conditions, soft versus firm uh, greens and fairways, things like that. So. Yeah. But, but yeah, this is, uh, I mean, there you have it. This, the game improvement irons yeah. available in 2022, nine of them. Um, I think they're, they're, they're all awesome. Yep. I hope this uh, data is relevant to all the viewers that are watching. Yeah. I wanted to give oh, yeah. it a little slower swing speed, a little steeper attack angle, yeah. 
um, just to showcase, you know, hey, you can play these clubs even if you're swinging at 80 miles right. an hour. Oh yeah, I think that's something to, t to note. And also as we move into 2023, of course, there's going to be new game for when iron models out there. Um, they're probably gonna have a pretty hefty price tag. These will still be available at second swing uh, for a much lower price tag. So if you're interested in those, uh, you can also get fit for them at second swing, either in our stores, or you can connect with somebody through the live chat on secondswing.com. And one of our experts will take care of you and get you with the right game improvement iron set in your bag. Thomas, great stuff today, great information. Um, a hefty video, a lot of, a lot of <laughs> shots you had to hit, but Great stuff. I think the viewers will enjoy it.